My name is Emil Bjørnsson, I'm an associate professor at Linköping University and in this video I will talk about which variables that can be optimized in wireless communications. I will cover things that have been done in the past and also mention some opportunities that there are for future research. And everything will be about wireless or cellular communications and the idea with cellular communication is that you would like to cover a large region with wireless services and to do that, you put up a number of base stations that is each one covering a certain subregion, which we call a cell. And in order for this system be, to be efficient, these cells need to operate at the same time and use the same time frequency resources. And that leads to interference. So when this base station is sending signals to its users over here, and this base station sends signals to its users over here, there will be some crosstalk, some interference from this different base stations to the uses of the other base station. And therefore, it's important to try to take that interference into consideration when you design your transmissions, and in particular, when you decide how much power you should spend on transmissions, so that the signal coming from this base station will not create too much interference to the user in the other cell. And a classical way of modeling this is to say, well, we have a certain number of transmitters here, T1, transmitter 1, T2, transmitter 2, and these ones are communicating with one receiver each. Receiver 1 is the desired receiver for transmission 1, and receiver 2 down here is the desired destination for the signal from transmission 2. However, there are these dashed interfering transmissions that happens at the same time. Some notation, when you transmit, from a transmitter, in general transmitter TYI, PI is the power that is used for that transmission. And we will have in general here K transmitters and receivers. And the channel gain that says how much power we lose on the way when the signal is radiating and propagating from transmission point one here to receiver one. Here we call it G11, so that is in the power domain how much we are losing. And in a real system that can be minus 70 decibel or even more. And this so-called channel gain, in general we call it G and the subscript KI. K is the number of transmitter, for example, one in this case. And the I is the index of the receiver, which could be number two here. And then we get G12, transmitter one, receiver two. And you will then have all of these four G parameters describing all the channels in this setup where we have two transmitters and two receivers. And when you want to measure the performance in a system like this, the signal to interference and noise ratio or SINR is a typical way of modeling things or capturing the performance. And the SINR for the transmission to receiver I have this particular form. It is a fraction, and in the numerator, we have the desired signal. We have PI, that is the transmit power of that signal to, towards that user, and GII, that is a channel from a transmitter to itself. Then, in the denominator, we have two terms. The first term is the interference, and we have a summation here over all of the other transmitters, K, except the transmitter that is desired to me. And there is the channel from those ones to me and the power that they are transmitting at. So that is the interference power. And finally, we have the noise variance. So this is the typical way of writing up the signal to interference and noise ratio for a system. And it can be used as a baseline to measure the performance in the system. And this has been done for many, many years. A typical way of designing a good system has been to minimize the transmit power that we need in order to deliver a certain number of the SINR for each of the users, which we call the SINR constraints. And here is the same type of setup, but I've written it up for K users or, and transmitters and receivers. So the goal is to minimize the sum for all the transmissions, so their powers, by selecting these power parameters. And these power parameters are entering each of the SINR expressions because the power that they transmit to my user is desired to that one, but it's interfering for everyone else. And here I have a constant, gamma i, that describes the required SINR level that 
this transmission to user i has. And that one is usually determined what, by the type of application that the user is having. Is it watching a video that requires very high SINR, high data rates, or is it just a small file that's going to be transmitted? And this is a typical optimization problem. Minimize something, in this case the transmit power that we have in total, subject to that the SINR of each of the users, 1 to k, is greater or equal to a certain required level that is required for that particular user. This type of optimization problems, you can find them in the literature for a long time. For example, there is a paper from Bock and Epstein called Assignment on Transmit Powers by Linear Programming from the Transactions on Ele Electromagnetic Compatibility from 1964. So that is many, many years ago. So they were showing that by rearranging things, essentially taking the denominator here and move it to the other side, everything here becomes what is called a linear program in optimization theory. And that is one of the easiest type of problems to solve. So this has been known for 1964. So what has happened since then? Well, people have been looking into the same problem, but under more extensive uh, assumptions or more general assumptions. For example, they try to minimize the power under SINR constraints when you have what you call beamforming, meaning that the transmitter has multiple antennas and therefore it can assign different amounts of power to different antennas and also different phases in order to direct the signals in different directions. And this is something that I've been talking with about in other videos as well. And in that way, you have more variables to optimize and you need to formulate it in a slightly different way it's not a linear program anymore, but you can formulate it in a way that is still efficiently solvable. You can take fading channels, meaning channels that are varying over time, into account. And as soon as you have a channel that changed over time, you don't know the channel gains perfectly because they're going to change. And you don't have resources to get the exact value of them. And those estimation errors that you will have in such a system can be taken into account into these problems. And also, instead of optimizing the power in the short run, okay, you have a bad channel in this millisecond and therefore I would like to send very much power then, uh, instead of doing something like that, so just uh, trying to invert the reality, uh, you can just say, well, if it's bad now, it's going to be better later on, my channel, so therefore I can find the power that is good in the long run and save energy in that type of way. And that can be done by computing a certain type of effective SINR that describes the long-term performance and optimize those ones instead. And that has been done in literature as well, in particular in the field of massive MIMO. And you can also take other types of interference into account when modeling things like this, like the distortion that comes from hardware impairments in the systems, so the hardware is not perfect. Other things that people have been doing is to consider other objective functions, other things you can maximize instead of minimizing the power under these SINR constraints. Because maybe these SINR constraints are not known or hard to find in reality. One typical thing you can find in literature is to optimize the sum rate. What is the sum rate? Well, you want to maximize something, namely the sum of the log 2 of 1 plus these SINR expression that we had before. And this represents the log 2 of 1 plus SINR, the achievable rate, the bits per second per hertz that you can transmit on. And this is still a function of the transmit powers. And now you want to select them to make this as large as possible, but every transmitter have a certain amount of power that you can transmit with. And in total, therefore, you will have a power constraint. It can be the sum of the power should be smaller or equal to a particular number, p max, or it could be multiple different constraints, one per user potentially. Another thing that people have been looking at in literature is the maximum fairness. You want to make sure that the communication system is perceived as fair by the users. While when you maximize the sum of the user's performance, there is no guarantee that a particular user gets a certain performance. While in the maximum fairness case, you would like to make sure that everyone gets exactly the same performance. And that performance is something that should be as large as possible. Therefore, we would like to maximize the minimum of all the SINRs. And by doing that, when you maximize things, that always leads to everyone getting exactly the same SINR. 
And you do that still by selecting your transmit powers, subject to a certain power constraint, which could be the same as in the summary case. Another, a bit different criteria or objective that people have been optimizing is what is called the energy efficiency. And the energy efficiency is uh, measured as taking your sum rate and divide it with the power you need to spend in order to achieve that sum rate. So you have a sum here of all the transmit powers plus what I call the circuit power or hardware consumed power. So that is the power that you need for all the processing that is going to be done in the digital baseband and all the analog hardware as well. And still, what is the optimization variable? It's P1 to PK, the transmit powers. And they are entering both the sum rate expression and the denominator down here. So this is an example of things that people in the literature have been studying for the past 50, 60 years. And one of the main characteristics here is that all of them have the same optimization variables, namely the transmit powers. So we know by now pretty well how to optimize a wireless communication systems with respect to the transmit powers. This is actually textbook material. You can find a number of different textbooks I take the opportunity to mention my own textbook called Optimal Resource Allocation in Coordinated Multicell Systems that I wrote together with Edward Jorsvik a few years ago. You can download the PDF online for free. Uh, so it's easy to study up on these things, but it also shows that most of the things are known when it comes to optimizing the transmit powers. There is even on my GitHub page simulation code you can download that solves many of these problems. So you don't even need to implement things yourself. So then the question is, is there anything else to be, do, to be done if you are interested in doing optimizations in wireless communications? And yes, there are many potential optimization variables that people have been treating as constants before. One thing is what I call M, capital M, the number of antennas per transmitter. Another thing is what I will call K, that is the number of active users per cell. A third option, I will call it lambda, that is the density of base stations, how many base stations you have in the region. And the fourth one will be called epsilon, that is the, a hardware quality indicator. And I will give you some examples in this video on ways to optimize these things, which are typically considered constants in previous works. And my objective will primarily be to maximize the energy efficiency of the system in order to figure out how to find a good combination of these things that maximize the energy efficiency. And energy efficiency is measured in bits per joule. And it's essentially the sum rate or the average sum rate measured in bits per second per cell, if it's a cellular network divided by the average power consumption in watt per cell. And this power consumption is both transmitted power and hardware consumed power. I will give you a number of examples where we have touched upon the surface on how to optimize things like this. The first work is about an energy efficient multi-user system. So the idea is that we have a cell with the base station in the middle. In this cell, there's a lot of users according to some user distribution that says, well, the users are here with certain probabilities. And from this cell, I can pick K users randomly. And they have certain random locations. And when I pick them K, I get K locations. Next time I select another K users that would like to be active, I get another set of locations for the users and therefore other channel gains. And I would like to serve them with the rate R. That's another variable. And I do it from the base station by putting M antennas on them. That can be one antenna, but it can also be a hundred antennas as illustrated in this figure. And my goal here is to optimize these parameters, K, R, and M. So my problem is to select these variables to maximize the energy efficiency. And in order to do that, what is the first thing you need to do? Well, you need to figure out how do you model the energy efficiency? And in particular, how do I model it such that M, K, and R are variables that appear in my expression, so I actually have a chance of optimizing them. And that is something that took us quite a while to do. We eventually reached a maximization problem, 
with respect to m, k, and not r, we used something called rho, which was, which was related to r, like this, to r minus 1. So this becomes something, the sin r, instead of the rate. And then I divide it by m minus k as well. These were some particular assumptions using zero force in transmissions and other assumptions that are not so important in this case. The important thing is that we have a ratio, a average rate divided by an average power consumption. So in the numerator, we have a sum rate, k is number of users, b is the bandwidth, log 2 or 1 plus something that happens to be an SINR expression. And here we also have this row that is some kind of transmit power that I'm optimizing to get a certain rate. Then I have many, many terms in the denominator. The first one has to do with the transmit power, rho, is related to the transmit power, that is what I can optimize. Then I have some things like b times sigma squared, this has to do with the noise power. This parameter s has to do with how my region looks like, and k is the number of users, because I, if I'm serving k users, I need to use k times more power. Then I have many, many different terms here towards the end. This describes the circuit power, the hardware consumed power. And this is essentially a polynomial in M, the number of antennas, and K, the number of users. And then we have some constants in the polynomial C1, C0, C1, D1, C1, D2, C2, C3, and D3. And these are constant terms, things that scale with M, or with K, or with the product of them, or with the, the uh, K to the power 2, K to the power 3, and M K squared. And all these things in, you can model it and figure out that this comes from adding more antennas. Well, that should be proportional to the number of antennas. Adding more users that are active, that's proportional to the number of users. C0 is a constant term for having a, even a base station turned on. And the rest of the terms here have to do with the baseband processing that's being done. The more users you have, the more you need to use baseband processing to separate these signals. And the important thing is not exactly how we derive this expression, but the fact that we, you can get an SINR or expression, you can get the transmit power expression, you can get the circuit power expression, write up the energy efficiency and maximize it. And we have a paper where we are doing this analytically, but I will just only show you a simulation of it. In this simulation, here I have the number of antennas from 1 up to 200. Here I have the number of uses that I'm serving from 1 up to 150. And here we have the energy efficiency being computing using that formula with certain values and all the parameters. And we can see we have a certain shape of the region. It goes up with number of users up to a certain point and then it goes down again. And the same thing with the number of antennas. It goes up to a certain point and then it goes down again. The optimum in this case is to have 185 antennas and 110 users. This is really a system with many antennas, many users. These type of systems are known as massive MIMO. And the energy efficiency that we can achieve this is something very large, 25.88 megabit per joule, which is much larger than in current systems. And maybe the numbers is not the most important thing here, but the fact that we can actually optimize things, we can treat the number of users, the number of antennas as optimization variables in future systems. The reference for this is a paper that we wrote a few years ago called Optimal Design of Energy Efficient Multi-User MIMO Systems. Is Massive MIMO the answer? And this paper received a 2018 uh, IEEE Marconi Prize award paper award in wireless communications. And I would say one of the reasons that we received this award was that uh, we were opening up the box of optimizing new variables that have not been done before. After we wrote that paper, we were, we were thinking about, well, we only had one cell, in most of the paper at least, and we would like to not only have multiple cells, but also play around with how many cells should we have. And in order to do that, we need to have a model of how we can put out base station uh, such that we can treat the number of base station as an optimization variable. And then we turn to something that is called stochastic geometry and using a homogeneous Poisson point process. What is that? Well, that is a way of putting out points randomly in the region. You put independent and equal distributed points in, for example, R2, so in, in the plane, which will be the, the Earth. And you have then a variable 
lambda that describes the number of base station per square kilometer that we have on the average. And that is what, what will be our optimization variable. And the meaning of that is that if you take an area with a certain size, a square kilometer, then you multiply the base station density with this var value, put it into a Poisson random number generator, and you get a certain number that have lambda times a as its uh, mean value. And you get that random number of points, and those are uniform distributed within that area. So an example of that would be that, say that lambda times a is 6, so there will be on average six base stations in a particular area. Then here are some different realizations. In this case, we get more than six points. And then I've drawn what is called Voronoid regions uh, to create cells. So these are all the points that are close to this base station location. Here will the users be for that cell. And you get that for all of different cells. Here we have four different points. Here we have another four, but with a different shape. And here we have yet another shape. In the, different number of base station locations. So in this way we were able to treat lambda as an optimization variable. And then what we needed to do was to get the new energy efficiency optimization problem, compute achievable rates that have lambda as an optimization variable or something that we can actually optimize within it. So in this paper, deploying dense networks for maximal energy efficiency, small cells meets massive MIMO, we were writing up an optimization problem where we can have the number of antennas, number of users, yet again, something transmit power related, and then the base station density. And we optimized an average rate expression divided by the total power. And these things are yet, uh, again, uh, functions of these optimization variables. That's the whole point. And in this case, we were also setting a particular SINR level that every user needed to have. But we didn't know how many users and how many antennas we needed to deliver that. We generated a similar graph for different number of users, different number of antennas, and we can get this for every value on lambda and rho as well, but we were optimizing those on top of it. And the insights that we had was that, well, ideally we would like lambda, the base station density, to be as large as possible. We want to have base stations everywhere. However, as soon as we put up base stations that are above, say, 10 base stations per square kilometer, the gain of putting up more base stations in the network is not so large anymore, because in the beginning when you densify, you save a lot on the distances to become much shorter between you and your, the user you would like to reach, and therefore you can cut down on your transmit power. But when you cut down so much that it's not the transmit power, but the hardware consumed power that dominates, you don't benefit much anymore. So, Typically, the insight here is that if you have a very low base station density, you densify your network, and when you reach a certain point, you don't benefit much from densifying anymore, and then you would like to add more antennas and users instead. And a similar graph, you get a certain point that gives us the global optimum in energy efficiency. This is another type of network. We have a smaller number because of interference from other cells. We have a small number of antennas and users, but still 7 to 8 antennas, 12 users. That is usually considered a massive MIMO setup. Finally, one an other variable that I have been trying for a long time to treat as an optimization variable is the hardware quality. Because there is a design trade-off in real networks between having high resolution hardware that creates a little distortion, maybe it's negligible distortion of your signals, However, the hardware will consume a lot of power. You need to have many branches in a receiver in order to uh, make it behave as uh, being almost ideal. However, if you instead would use low resolution hardware, few bits in your quantizers or an amplifier that is not particularly linear, you will have higher distortion, but it will also be simpler, more compact hardware that consumes less power. So obviously there is a trade-off between these different things. And that was something that we looked into in the paper called Hardware Design and Optimal ADC Resolution for Uplink Massive MIMO Systems from a conference uh, 2016. What we did, we used a simple model 
for hardware quality, where we say that we have something called epsilon that describes the hardware quality. And it means that epsilon square of the signal power is taken away and replaced by random distortion power to having that same power that we removed, meaning that the power of the signal plus distortion is the same as before, but the larger epsilon is, the larger fraction of the signal power is turned into distortion. And obviously epsilon needs to be between 0 and 1 for this to make sense. We were able to find an optimization problem where we could select how many antennas we would like to have and which hardware quality we should have on each of the antennas. And we characterize the sum rate of the system with respect to the number of antennas and uh, the hardware quality. We computed what the power consumption would be as a function of the number of antennas and the hardware quality per antenna. And we said that we have gamma, that is the maximum power we are allowed to spend. And we would like to find the combination of antennas and hardware quality at the antennas that gives us the best solution. So we essentially can compare having few antennas with good hardware and many antennas with bad hardware. And here is one example of the type of simulation result we get. Here is the hardware impairment or hardware quality factor epsilon. Here is the number of antennas. And different lines like this represent different values of gamma. So here is one line, here is one line, here is one line. And on each of those lines, there will be one point marked green here that gives us the optimum, the maximum sum rate of the system. So as a summary, would you like to optimize wireless communication systems in the future? I hope so. And if you want to take part of this, you should optimize design variables that have previously been considered constants. And I gave you an example of four such variables and you can work with those ones. There are definitely other variables that people haven't thought about optimizing before, but just treat it as constants. And therefore possible research directions that you can do immediately is to compare different network topology. Compare what is called a massive MIMO system, where you have base station put out with a relatively low base station density, but having many antennas on each one of them. Or to have small cells, meaning you have a large base station density, so every cell is very small, but you have typically a, a, a little hardware on each one of them, so a small number of antennas, and typically then serving a small number of users. You can also compare different hardware designs, few transceivers with high quality, many transceivers with low quality. And I hope you will help me with uh, doing research in these fields and submit papers, and uh, good luck with that.